Well, I was born in a magic trunk. Uh, my mother and father were magicians. Not in vaudeville, that was a little before our time, but the, uh, uh, my dad was a uh, criminal attorney, actually, by profession, but he gave up the practice of law to go on the road as a Larson family of magicians. <laughs> Plenty to see upstairs, so uh, probably best just to go up there. I just grew up in magic, and uh, the, the uh, everything that we ever did or have done somehow comes down that same trail of magic. And I've done other things, but it all comes back to magic, magic, magic. Magic is traceable to ancient societies and throughout much of our recorded history. According to the California Science Center's website, the story of the magical arts is as old as recorded history. The West Car Papyrus, written nearly 4,000 years ago, tells a story of a magician performing centuries earlier in the Pharaoh's court. This is proof that this craft has been around for centuries, astonishing and fascinating the masses. But why is there this fascination with magic? Starting to happen. Well, magic is a wonderful art. And it is an art form because the uh, magicians are able to transport you into a whole different world. It's kind of an Alice in Wonderland type thing or Harry Potter, if you will, in today's world. And uh, when you watch a magician, you, you automatically can't think of anything other than what's he going to do next. The reason it never grows old is it's the world's most ancient art. But the... Uh, it never grows old because it's always something new and different. And also magicians think beyond the average person. The average person said, well, it can't be done. And that unfortunately is part of the philosophy of the world. Many magicians have attempted Houdini's water torture cell escape trick, including illusionist Doug Henning. However, after three runs on Broadway performing magic, he left the industry. Oh, this is a Doug Henning. He uh, signed this about uh, maybe six or eight months before he passed away. He just uh, moved back to Los Angeles. He was going to get back into magic, and he, we had a nice chat. And uh, then he died, like maybe six, seven months later. This guy, Andy Dick, that you see right here, designer. His favorite thing to do when he comes to Magic Alphabet. I'm going to demonstrate for you, but I'm not. I'm going to ask you not to do this. I'm going to demonstrate. Here's what he, Andy Dick likes to do when he comes. That's what he likes to do magic because it adds a little bit of a surprise and wonder. <laughs> okay, now I want you to try it. Come on down. And in, for a lot of people, I think it brings them back to a time when they could be, you know, after, um, you know, after a while, you know all the rules of the universe, and uh, our aim is to bring people back to a time when they could be surprised and amazed and remind them of the magic in our everyday lives. Yeah. Uh, Spill I mean. says oh, his fellow magicians oh, react fellow similarly. Magicians. Ben Proudfoot, who recently graduated from the Magic Castle's junior program, says that magic is a metaphor for transcending rules. You know, there's all kinds of rules that we Mark? take for granted. Take a card trick, for instance. You have a card, it's lost in the deck, and the magician finds it. You know, it's impossible to find it. I don't know where it is, and then he finds it. Very simple trick. You know, we lose things every day. We misplace things every day, and this guy is able to magically find it with no, practically no effort at all. And it gives us a feeling of transcendence, like those barriers can be transcended. And it's mixed with this sort of astonishment at the same time we're laughing. I think at its core, that's what magic's about, is it's about um, you know, giving us that feeling of the, our burdens being lifted off. So when I did this and I go, then it disappears. You don't like that. Yeah, I, I just, it's like, it's only because it's so overdone. I, yeah. I much prefer a magical gesture, I think, as far as just superior to that. So if I like Bob that, Dorian is the head of the junior program at the Magic Castle. Like that, and you can just, even though... Like that? Yeah. And then produce it over here, and then I could just turn it into your watch. Would yeah. that be good? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be good, too. Yeah. I was thinking about that. How did you do that? <laughs> what the, well, what the draw is and what the draw should be are, 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 are I think, are two different things. The great French magician, Robert Houdin, who lived in the um, 1800s, was really considered the, uh, considered the first, the father of modern magic. And he always said, a magician is an actor playing the part of a magician. Sadly, in modern times, 
it's changed from an actor playing the part of a magician to a nerd playing the role of a jerk. And it ha and that, that is that type of, of thinking that we try and, and get away from. And, and so it is, it is still a craft. It's a, it's a theatrical craft. I think that people like to believe that there, that there is magic. I mean, the most intelligent people know that really we cannot levitate around the room and you cannot fly around and really you can't cut somebody in half. But I think there's something to be said. It kind of brings out the kid in, pe kid in people where they'd like to believe. I don't know. I know it's not possible. But man, he sure does make it look possible. Uh, this is one of our, our uh, good friends of mine, Tony Clark. He's been all over the world. He does magic. He's got DVDs and beginner stuff. You know, for the kids, any of these tricks, I have, you know, two daughters, they love these tricks, they're easy to do, they're cheap, they're three bucks, five bucks, eight bucks. Most kids start here, whether it be one of my favorite tricks, it's only three bucks, but it really is amazing. You put the ball in your pocket and it magically reappears back in the vase. Brent Jarris owns the Magic Apple. The Magic Apple is a retail store dedicated to the art of magic and magicians. There's a foam brick, uh, just let's pretend. Um, there's all these different decks of cards. They all are magical themselves. Each one of them does do different things that take a lot of practice. All of our coin tricks are here. You can buy silks. At the top. Even if it's just a simple coin trick or a simple card trick, I think it's fun to be fooled. I don't know if somebody wants to be fooled like, ha ha, I fooled you, you can't figure me out, versus uh, the magical, a magic moment when you put a coin in somebody's hand and it vanishes, but they swear it's there. Or when somebody like David Copperfield flies on stage. Well, I know that he's not really flying on stage, but he is fooling that audience. It's back on top. It's because the queen is a magic card. She'll hypnotize you. Woo! You're now hypnotized, and it's going to look like the entire deck of cards has changed into the queen, except for that five of diamonds. You can see this. Every single card has changed into the queen. But of course, you've just been hypnotized. We'll cut the deck one last time. There's the queen. And now it's back to a normal deck of cards. Blam! There you go. Thanks for visiting. It's an old saying, it's fun to be fooled, which is true. Now, a lot of people don't like being fooled. We have people that say, I hate magic because I don't want to be fooled. I don't want to have anything I don't understand. Happily, most people take it for what it is, which is sheer entertainment, and we don't take ourselves terribly seriously. But the, uh, the average uh, magician, you know, people can learn to be magicians. It's not something where, you know, a big bolt of lightning comes down and you've got the Merlin hat and a wand with sparks coming out of it. It's not the way it is. Uh, magic is simply a form of entertainment very much like a person learns to tap dance or a person is a great singer or whatever they happen to do in enter entertainment wise as long as people are entertained by what you do it doesn't matter if you're a magician or a juggler or a, a ventriloquist or whatever you are but you, because the uh, the the object of the game is to entertain the public now that's not necessarily to fool them because it could be very entertaining on the other hand they never can figure out exactly what a magician's doing, so therefore, I guess we're fooling them all the time. Uh, uh, well, you can blow on it and say, you guys watch this. Bob doesn't like that easy to say, you guys. There's an old equation that um, what, magic plus theater equals like art. And I don't know to what extent that applies, but I mean, art is to hang in a museum. We just want to make it as good, as entertaining as possible and also to fool people because uh, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that a lot of magic simply doesn't fool people. I think they're just too polite. One, two. If they weren't polite, they wouldn't uh, applaud as much as they do. I think a lot of people think about magic as being fooled. Um, and I think that's something that's unique in magic. And I think it's because, you know, the magician is much more forthright with the fact that he is tricking you. But if a magician makes a coin disappear and it's beautiful, they say, where is it? Which hand is it in, right? So I think it's just natural for our curiosity. And I think it's a, you know, it's sort of a sad thing that people get focused on the being fooled aspect of magic. A lot more activity, these are all colored in.
Still, says Milt Larson, magic plays a role in people's everyday lives. This one takes seconds. We're in a very, very horribly serious world. And a lot of people say, well, it's, it's bad to, to escape. They say, no, it's not. I mean, laughter is the best medicine in the world for any, any sickness or anything. Happiness is, is great. If magicians can make you laugh and be happy and, and escape, well, that reduces that person to being a child again. Stick a needle through your arm. There's so much crazy in the world, and there are people are upside down in their jobs, or the economy is doing something. It's just a nice, whether you're at the Magic Castle, or you've hired somebody for an eight-year-old birthday party, it's just fun to forget about everything, watch this guy do some magic tricks, do some fun routines, make him laugh. Magic is very important uh, in people's lives because, you know, given it is a, it is a frivolity, uh, is magic necessary in people's lives? No. But is, is art? Is theater? Yes. And magic is a part of that. Um, and I think why magic is a joy and a wonderful thing in people's lives is because it adds variety, it gets us excited, it makes us feel, it makes us, you know, hopefully, uh, magic at its best, makes us feel, it makes us think, you know, it makes us come together as a community. You know, all the good things that theater and film and all those things do, magic does when it's at its best. And on our show, we try and uh, uh, not just entertain people and bring, take them away from their problems for a while, uh, but also enlighten them by sharing something autobiographical or something um, observational or add some uh, romance or danger or uh, other elements just the same way that you might hear uh, two people sing the same song and it comes out different. Proudfoot says that magic is a performer's art that still continues at the Magic Castle anyway. Looking a little bit objectively at the magic community it's really a wonderful unique thing that doesn't really exist a lot of other places. You know, here is a, you know, secular uh, group that, of young people and older people with just the intention of, you know, getting better at your craft. One thing that we always teach is, is it's like an, you're like an attorney. Never ask the question to which the answer is something you don't want to hear. Because if you, if, you, if you were to take a coin and say, uh, and say it's gone, say, do you have any idea where it is? You say, yeah, you dropped it in your lap. You know, you don't want to hear that. So you just don't ask that question. And that, that's, that's actually a good rule for life as well. I want to think about the impossible. I want to think about the fact that we can do something that you can't do, and that is to imagine. So what the magicians do is they, they give you a world that you can only imagine exists. And here's a guy doing some amazing trick that you can't explain. Isn't that fun? So uh, I guess that's what it's all about.